YouTube Oz it going. The Goat House is back with an updated NFL mock draft after free agency, after most most of free agency, and after that Vikings-Texans trade. I have my own trade predictions in this video. Feel pretty good about those. Um, you know, so excited about this. Two rounds we're going to go through. We have a bunch of free agency content on the channel. A little bit more of that to come, but it is officially draft season, so I'm excited. Make sure you join us on Twitter as well. Link's pinned in the comments for anything you're looking for. Bears still going with Caleb Williams. Had this from the start. Uh, going to continue to roll with it. Now they trade Justin Fields. It looks more evident that it's going to happen, even though some people didn't think it would. But I, I still think there's a small percentage chance that maybe they trade to two and they because they like a different quarterback like Drake May. Uh, they get free picks, essentially. Uh, you know, I can't say 0% chance that happens. The draft is always pretty wild, but this is what we're expecting here. And this is kind of yeah what I've had from the start um, of this offseason. Uh, number two, I still have Drake May to the Commanders. Some talk about them trading. Could they go to one or could they go back? You know, the, talk about the Vikings trading up with the package of picks that they uh, gathered, I suppose. Uh, some Again, some people believe that yeah, that's a, you know, for the Vikings to trade up, watch out for the Commanders. I, I'm not really seeing it. Drake May, I think, is a great fit for Kingsbury's offense. People talking about Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams, or Jaden Daniels. I think Drake May is a great fit for that offense. I think he's a great prospect. He plays some hero ball, you know, here and there. He's going to throw the ball up for grabs. He'll have interceptions. What rookie doesn't, you know, I guess CJ Stroud, but he'll have some turnovers right away. Um, but he'll also have those big time plays. But the commanders have done a really good job gathering a lot of key players in free agency. You know, they're not, it doesn't, and they've gathered picks as well. It doesn't feel like they're a trade back and get more picks and go full rebuild type team based on what they've done and based on what Dan Quinn wants to do. So I don't really see them trading back, especially to 11. That's my take on it right now. Stay put at two. Take Drake May. I've had that same one and two for a bit here, but I would love this for the commanders. Uh, this is where I got the trade. So the lo a lot of talk about the Vikings making a trade and maybe I went bold here on who they had on who I had them taken uh taking here but um for me Patriots probably should strongly strongly consider staying put at 3 taking Daniels themselves because it's a good quarterback class at the top, at the top. they need a, they badly need a quarterback uh the quarterback class next year not looking great it's hard to predict the future um, you know, so it's probably you know again this is kind of a predict the pick predict the mock type situation uh, but at the same time, the Patriots do need a lot more help than just quarterback. They got to get that offensive line set. You know, they got to get it finished, ready to go for their quarterback in the future. It's still very much a work in progress. And the offensive line class is really good um, this year, you know, especially in the first round. So Patriots in this scenario, they get the 11th pick on the Vikings and they get that new 23rd pick from the Vikings. And they also get a next year first. So three first. Did seem like a little bit, a little bit. It seems like the value, uh, the compensation goes up every year, especially if teams are desperate to go up and get a quarterback. But it did seem like a little bit, so I threw a six back to the Vikings. I can see a scenario where it's the exact same. I can see a scenario where that six isn't there. It's just number three to the Vikings. I can see a scenario where they don't give up that 25 or the 23rd overall. Uh, you know, or the 25 first, but they give other, you know, day two picks. Uh, but this is a realistic trade. Uh, again, maybe most of us would recommend the Patriots staying put and taking that quarterback, but they do need a lot more pieces, especially on the offensive line. So go get that set and get your future picks uh, before getting that quarterback, perhaps. For the Vikings, all you hear about is J.J. McCarthy, J.J. McCarthy, J.J. McCarthy. A little bit of Drake May because the McCown connection and he, how perfect a fit he would be. Yes, I get that. But, I, again, I think it's Williams and May 1 and 2, whether it's the Bears and the Commanders or the Commanders and the Bears. You know, most likely the Bears, then the Commanders. Um, how about Jane Daniels? A top prospect for a reason. Um, I, you know, the Vikings very well could be super high on J.J. McCarthy. Definitely possible, but... It is smoke season. What, what was being said about the quarterbacks this time last year? Uh, the Texans were only going to take quarterback if Bryce Young was there. Otherwise, they're going to pass on C.J. Stroud. That went all the way up until the draft. Wrong. You know, smoke. They took C.J. Stroud. They made a trade up to kind of help get them, you know, another top pick in Will Anderson. Uh, the Colts, it, all the talk was about either Will Levis unless C.J. Stroud drops to him. And it's starting to sound like C.J. Stroud's going to drop to him. Wrong. They took Anthony Richardson. It sounds like they were going to take Richardson 
um, you know, no matter what there. So what we hear now, you know, is definitely smoke. And it's like so obvious, like McCarthy loves the Vikings. The Vikings love McCarthy. It could be this, it could be the pot. It could be what happens, but you know, something tells me, you know, they're, they're doing a, a good job at blowing some smoke here. And if they were going to trade and McCarthy feels like stay put at 11 type guy, or maybe trade up a little bit just so the Broncos down don't help uh, hop you. If you're trading all the way up to three, like the buzz is, like they're gonna trade somewhere around this range. I think you take that legit top tier, like wow talent, Jaden Daniels, because that's McCarthy is growing on me. You know, third down conversions. You know, being able to escape pressure, uh, throw on the run, um, winner. You know, clutch, but. You know, when you're taking a quarterback this high, and if you're putting that much value trading up, you want that wow, like that high end, big playability guy. The, there's two knocks on Jane Daniels. One is, yeah, he's got a thin frame, he takes a lot of hits. You know, can he handle that at the next level? Understandable. Next one seems to be not really much of a, a negative on him, but yeah, it was a really good offense, you know, really good weapons around him, two first round receivers. Um, you know, really good situation. But how about the Vikings going, you know, being coached by Kevin O'Connell, getting the best receiver in football, Justin Jefferson, having Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, um, you know, now Aaron Jones, you know, th these weapons that he has. It's a, you know, that's an LSU-like situation. It's a really good place for him to thrive. So um, I think if the Vikings moved up, I think it would be for a little bit bigger of a talent and they may, might be doing a good job with the smoke or maybe they made things too obvious uh, and they're taking McCarthy, which... Um, I would like McCarthy for them at 11. I, I don't know about a trade up. Is it necessary to trade up? That's the question. So a big splash trade, one that very real, realistically could happen, even if you think the Patriots shouldn't do it, which I might be in that boat. Um, but they get a good amount here, and then you got to build up that offensive line. Uh, fourth pick, this was tough. Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors for the Cardinals, one or the other. Do they shock the world? I mean, it wouldn't completely be that shocking because Roma Dunze is an elite receiver prospect, but do they shock the world and go with Dunze? I think it's Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors a lot coming out more and more each day that there's a chunk of teams that have Malik Neighbors number one because he's more of the do-it-all. He played about 50-50 outside in the slot. Um, he has every you know aspect of the receiver game to his game. Um, I'm, I'm leaning more. It's 50-50 for me. I'm still leaving Marvin Harris. I'm leaning Marvin Harrison Jr. Obviously, they're taking a receiver. They need a receiver very, very badly. They already needed one very badly, uh, and they lost Hollywood Brown. They traded away Rondale Moore. You know, they haven't added anybody. They need receivers multiple, very badly. Uh, you know, I think they knew what position they were in a long time ago, the Cardinals. They knew what position. They, like, they were going to be able to pick their receiver here at four, they knew the position they were in, and all our teams were going to be fighting for quarterbacks, trading up for quarterbacks, you know. And, and so, I think a long time ago, they knew that they were going to be taking the top receiver, excuse me, uh, in the draft here. And I, I think chances are Marvin Harrison Jr. has been their number one, you know, since the start. And most GMs do not like to change their minds. I'm kind of guessing here. That's what we have to do. But um, when they do change their minds, it kind of backfires on them. So stick with the safe choice here. I think they're all safe choices, to be honest. But go Marvin Harrison Jr. And then you have the Chargers at five taking Malik Neighbors. A lot of people are talking offensive line here. Um, maybe less of those people are talking that after they tra after they cut Mike Williams and traded Keenan Allen. They badly need a receiver. I mean, hell, there's teams that don't they don't badly need a receiver and they may consider one of these receivers because they are that good. They are that good. So if you need a receiver, you definitely take one of these guys. And you got rid of Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. What was great about Keenan Allen, he's a do-it-all type guy. Malik Neighbors is a do-it-all type of guy. This is the guy you take here at number five. Um, you know, you you gotta, you pretty much, you pretty much got to here. So, uh, and it's, and it's not, sometimes teams got to do this, got to do that because how badly they need something, but it's a reach. Not the case here. It's a huge, it's a huge need. You got to do it, but he is most definitely valuable enough to be worth the fifth overall pick. Obviously, uh, pick number six, we've mocked this quite a few times before the giants kind of, they didn't add a receiver. They badly need a receiver. They kind of they've added some pieces here and there on the offensive line, and they traded for Brian Burns. That was their splash move. So save that receiver need for the draft. A lot of talk uh, about quarterback. I'm not buying it. They they they, you know they do. I think they do need a quarterback, but I'm not really buying it here. Uh, they signed Daniel Jones to that big contract, and last year did he get a like, complete fair go at it? 
Not really. I'm not one to make excuses for quarterbacks, but you know, he, he would like to see him on that contract in a full season with the offensive line a little better and the receivers a little better. Um, so, uh, and, and they add Drew Locke, too. That's a pretty solid backup for Daniel Jones. So they're getting a receiver here. They have to be. Roma Dunze, that big-time outside receiver that they've been missing since Odell Beckham Jr. So they mo- in this scenario, they most definitely grab Roma Dunze. Come on. Seven, we know the Titans are probably going to go with uh, offensive tackle. They they help, they help themselves a tiny, tiny bit on the offensive line free agency. They helped everything else, adding Calvin Ridley. So they go with a tackle. Most of the talk is Joe Alt. Um, it, it's kind of 50-50 here. I'm leaning J.C. Latham. Uh, it just seems like a Callahan-type guy on that offensive line. Uh, based on any word I saw from you know around the league or scouts or uh, GMs, you know, unnamed GM, unnamed scout, uh, J.C. Latham is the guy. They're saying the media is too low on him, which they're not that low on him, but, um, you know, and he's the top guy. I've seen quotes, it's Latham versus Alt, and Latham is the better guy. So the league is high on Latham, and he, he was really good at Alabama, like big physical mover, obviously. A um, lot to like about him. Uh, so he's going to go earlier than the fans take seem to be, the fans seem to be low on Latham, but he's going to go a lot earlier than you think. Uh, I think they get that right tackle here. Uh, in Latham, um, I, I right now I think it's a little more likely than Alt, but they very well could go Joe Alt, maybe a little bit more of the upside guy. Do they want to work with him? We'll see. But we're definitely expecting tackle for the Titans at seven. Pick eight. I like Dallas Turner a lot for the Falcons. He's my top pass rusher, most people's top pass rusher in the class. The Falcons added their quarterback. They added their receivers. Uh, they they're an edge rusher away from a pretty complete roster. They probably need another corner, but um, you know they're going to survive without a corner. They got good coaching on defense with Raheem, Raheem Morris. Um, you know they need a pass rusher, and this is one of the more complete rosters in all of football. Dallas Turner, great fit for Raheem Morris's defense. As is an athletic freak in a production, you know, machine playmaker. Um, Got to be the pick here at eight. And I have two trades in this first round. Here's the other one. The Bears moving back. The Broncos going up. Uh, Broncos going to get J.J. McCarthy. Again, the Vikings very well could go up and get him. There's rumors about the Giants. I'm not buying the Giants. The, the Vikings, I could see. Um, the Bron- It just definitely seems like a Sean Payton guy here in J.J. McCarthy. And they left that quarterback spot wide open for the draft. Wide open. Sean Payton's going to pick his guy. They're going to make sure they get that guy. In this scenario, they move ahead of the Jets, who need a quarterback in the future. Most likely, not, maybe not going to take one, but they very well could get the one in the very near future. And then the Patriots, who traded back with the Vikings. But if it's the Vikings, it's the same situation. Uh, you know, In this scenario, the Patriots still need a quarterback. Vikings, if they're still at 11, they need a quarterback. The Broncos got to hop those teams. Um, and the Bears are a team that probably be desperate to trade back uh, because they only have four picks this year and they didn't gain a pick this year for fields that was surprising uh, and they keep trading it's a little surprising but um i'd say you know if somebody falls to them the bears gotta pick them but uh, like one of those receivers but they may have predetermined that they're going to trade back with this pick which i don't i hate predetermining things when it comes to the draft but we'll see what happens here uh so broncos go up to nine they give up 12 they give up a third round in a six round so not super high draft capital but uh, in most years, it'd probably be a third round, uh, but again, the value goes up a little bit each year, but you're only going from 12 to 9, so I threw another sixth round in there, um, so that helps the Bears collect a couple more picks there, uh, and the Broncos get their quarterback in the future. It feels like a Sean Payton guy here and J.J. McCarthy or Drew Brees-like type quarterback here. Um, not that I'm giving that much high praise, not saying he'll be Drew Brees, but yeah, just two teams that we... The Vikings are going to trade up. The Bears are going to trade back. That feels like like the most likely, and the Broncos are a likely team to trade up because they need a quarterback. They need to beat out the Vikings or any other teams to get their quarterback. And the Patriots are a team that needs a lot of pieces. So I, I like these trades a lot. Um, I usually don't want to overdo it with the trades, though. But 10, a lot of people are saying, well, the Jets aren't going to take a tackle now because they have Tyrone Smith and Morgan Moses. But uh, I'd say not so fast. They're both on one-year deals. They are both aging veterans um, you know, so they go get Joe Alt, and you know they both have the durability concerns, mainly Tyrone Smith. You go get Joe Alt, who can help them right now, but he is the upside guy of this group. He's a guy that can start right now, but he also has a ton of upside. He played defensive end and tight end in high school. Notre Dame turns him into a tackle. 
you know, when Notre Dame does that, it's a good look. It's a good look for a guy like Joe Alt here, and he was really good for them. So the guy of the future, maybe the guy right now, because how, how many, you know, guys, you know, how, how many snaps do these guys play on that offensive line? But, you know, they could go, they could go receiver. They could go Brock Bowers. They could go um, quarterback of the future. Could surprise some people. People would probably say no because the Packers, or the Packers pissed off Rodgers with love. But that was when Rodgers had a lot of years left. At this point, he does not. Um, you know, he's talking about things he's doing off the field too. So they could surprise some people and go that route. It wouldn't completely shock me if the quarterback's there. Uh, pick 11. So then you, there you have that trade. Uh, the Patriots went back. To 11 from three, they got another first and another first. So a team that still has a lot of needs, they need offensive line help. They need an offensive line to you know to get ready, get their quarterback protected before they get that quarterback. It's the only knock, and they don't have that quarterback yet. Um, you know, but they do have more picks here. Troy Fatanu, I've been saying it a lot. One of my favorite players in the draft. People have been sleeping on him, sleeping on him a little bit less after the combine. He is an easy mover. He's athletic. He's pretty nasty. You know, in some of these blocks, he gets downfield. A uh, big part of that Washington offense, how it was so good, was that offense line. Fatanu is a stud. The Patriots sounds like they're going to use Onwenu at right tackle. They need a left tackle and, and a guy that, you know, has upside at guard if you want to put him there. And then the Patriots are like that versatility potential, but they, they start him at left tackle. Fatanu is going to go earlier than you think. I would love this for the Patriots. They do need that quarterback still, but they go back to 11 and they get what they need here. And then that other, the rest of the other trade, again, the Bears only have four picks this year. They need more picks. They move back just a little bit, and they get a third, and they get a sixth. The value chart says you know just the third is enough, but value goes up uh, you know each year. So throw on that six with them. They would love that because that, that would mean they would have six picks, so looking pretty good. I'd say I would stay put if I was them if one of those elite receivers dropped. Even you know, It doesn't matter. you got Keenan Allen. It might be a rental one-year thing. He's got durability issues. He's aging. He's very good, though. Um, you know, so I would stay put. I don't like passing on elite talent, but they move back a little bit. It would make a little bit more sense for Jared Verse. I'm not the biggest Jared Verse guy. Uh, there's a chance he's my edge rusher four, but he is very good. High motor, uh, very physical, uh, good showing at the combine. For the most part, he, my knock on him is he's tight, you know, stays upright too much, and that kind of showed in the drills at the combine, so... You know, for me, not for most people, for me, this is a little early, but if you trade back, it, you know, as long as you're not passing on elite talent when you trade back or even when you're picking at 12, I'd be okay with it. Um, but it just seems like they're more of their fit, you know, in Eberflus defense with Jared Verse. Um, wouldn't mind Byron Murphy either. Wouldn't mind still taking a receiver you trade back, get Brian Thomas Jr. Wouldn't mind that at all. Uh, those guys are actually going to be higher on my board than Verse, the guys I just named. But um, Bears moving back, definitely a realistic possibility here. 13, the Raiders go Tyrion Arnold. This definitely could be Fuaga. It was a tough decision here. But, you know, when you have a top-tier corner that looks like a sure thing, usually those guys go earlier in this. So this might be the limit, you know, the furthest down he goes. But they do need that right tackle. I really thought about Fuaga here. It's a 50-50 call. Uh, but you get a big-time corner uh, for, the Ra for the Raiders here at 13. Uh, 14, Brock Bowers, I've had this before, just too good to pass. He can go much earlier in this, but uh, the value of the position, you know, looking at the other position, you know, teams taking quarterbacks, receivers, tackles, edge rushers, make a little bit more sense up there. Um, but the Saints, uh, yeah, this would help them a lot. You know, how much more does, and it's a totally different player, but how much more does Taysom Hill have for you? Um, you know, so, I mean, it's just a big-time weapon here for Derek Carr at that tight end position uh, at 14. 15, the Colts go Leatu Latu from UCLA, production machine, just big playability, getting after quarterback, even dropping in coverage. Um, you know, I, the Colts, you know, maybe their focus is on corner, you know, via trade right now. We'll see what happens there. Some rumors going around, but uh, I felt like and it, there was legit rumors that they were going to target an edge rusher early in free agency, and they don't like to spend big on someone other than their own. So I think they kind of got outbid for the the Neil Hunters and the Jonathan Grenards and, you know, guys like that. Um, so maybe they add that pass rusher here. And they kind of been going after the traits over production type pass rushers, and they're kind of lacking, you know, they want more production from their, their you know, quitty pay, guys, guys like that. But you go get the production machine and lot to who's worthy of the pick here at 15, makes some sense. Uh, 16, Seahawks go to Lise Fuaga, maybe just too good to pass on. Uh, in this scenario, they probably put him at guard. 
because they do have some tackles, but it feels like they're looking for just any offense lineman in general. They add George Fant. Is he the answer? Does he even start? Um, you know, so they could play Fuaga at right tackle, but he, there's a lot of talk about some teams liking him at guard, and he has a lot of upside, like Pro Bowl potential at guard, maybe a safer spot for him. And you look at the other guards in the draft, there's a big drop-off. There's guys not nearly as, go- as good. So you'd rather take this just much better player and move him to guard uh, would make a little bit more sense here uh, for Seattle because they badly need help in there. Um, next, the Jags go Quinion Mitchell. Yeah, another situation maybe just too good to pass. He can go a lot earlier. It's a it's possibility that he could be the first corner taken. I still think Arnold's that guy. Uh, but the Jags, they have Tyson Campbell, and they signed Ronald Darby for a really cheap deal. Um, he has major durability concerns. He was pretty solid last year, but major durability concerns. They need another corner in there, so... Um, they take Mitchell there at 17, uh, 18, Marius Mims, Georgia offensive tackle has a lot of upside in the Bengals grab him and plug him in at right tackle, uh, in this scenario, but a lot of upsides. Another one of those guys, the league could be higher on than, than media or fans are right now. We will see, uh, 19, this would be an A plus situation for the Rams. Aaron Donald surprisingly retired. Um, you know, they could use a D tackle. They could use a corner they could you know edge rush they could use a number of things here uh but getting that big time d tackle a top one in the class i, I think i one of my favorite players in the whole the whole draft i think very highly of byron murphy here he can go a lot earlier in this maybe the bears if they, they trade back like they did it's a possibility but um get that big time d tackle here uh you know try to replace it's impossible but try to replace aaron donald uh but that'd be a great pick for the rams at 19 Steelers go with a big time receiver, Brian Thomas Jr. Which with his talent, his athletic ability combined with his size, he can go a lot earlier in this. Um, but I do like this pick. They traded Deontay Johnson. They still have George Pickens. You had another big body receiver with George Pickens, but Arthur Smith, their offense coordinator, he he loves himself some big body re- receivers here. Uh, you know, so it's just that type of style of play that you know fits Ar- you know Arthur Smith's system. Um, so add Brian Thomas Jr. along with George Pickens uh, makes some sense here. Also, could see Lad McConkey. You know that'd be a, it'd be a little bit early, but uh, Brian Thomas of the Steelers, twenty one. Alu Fashanu for the Dolphins. They need a tackle of the future and maybe for right now. Um, I'm not a huge Fashanu guy. I didn't love his tape. I, I'm not really seeing the crazy hype on him. But so I think this is more of his range. I would even I I'm probably gonna have guys higher on my board than him available still at this point. But um, yeah, it wouldn't be a bad pick down here. Uh, they get that tackle that they need. It just seems like an Armstead type guy. I think you can learn a lot from Toronto Armstead there, so it makes sense. Twenty two Eagles go with a linebacker. The Eagles done a pretty decent job in free agency. They've added some linebackers, but they aren't sure of things and they're one year deal type guys. Uh, maybe they didn't really get the high end guys that they really wanted to. Uh, or maybe they have a plan of getting one in the draft. They typically do not value linebackers like this in the draft, but I think they're going to start. Um, Edger and Cooper seems like the the best one in the class. Do it all type guy. Could blitz. Can cover. Freak. You know, athleticism. Pretty rangy. A lot of upside there. You could even put him off the edge if you want to at times. Get crazy. Get unique. Um, so the Eagles get get uh, their new linebacker of the future. 23, so, yep, a little bold here. Uh, Patriots gather that Vikings pick of 23. 11, 23, and a next year first as well. You know, they get that offensive line kind of set up, and they grab Bo Nix. They get a quarterback on a fifth-year option rather than waiting to the second round here. A guy that's actually more, you know, he doesn't have that wow ability, and he doesn't have a ton of upside, but he might be more pro-ready. Um, you know, he might, you might be able to plug him, you know, in and he understands the playbook and he's ready to roll, you know, compared to some of the other guys that even are better than him. Um, so I think the Patriots could like that, um, worth a shot here at 23 They get that fifth year option. Like I said, and they gather, um, in this case, Fatano, another offense lineman, and they get a uh, next year, first round pick, um, as well. So unique situation for the Patriots here. Uh, 24 Jackson powers, Johnson for the Cowboys. They lost Biotish, Uh, so they could definitely use the center. They definitely need a tackle as well, but I like the value with powers Johnson here at 24, a guy, um, that's going to be a start of a center. The question is how early do you take a center? Some of the best in football have guys that are, te- that teams took in the third, fourth round. Um, but a very good one here, uh, in JPJ from Oregon. So we actually had back-to-back ducks go there. 25 Packers go Jerzon Newton. So pair him with Kenny Clark. Um, 
you know, on, on the, the defensive line. They could use a linebacker. I think it's a little early to take a linebacker here. Maybe if Edger and Cooper still available, I have them off the board. Could go corner. They're probably looking for another safety pair at McKinney, but they already valued that spot so much that they'll probably use a, a later pick. Not a late pick, but a later than a 25th overall pick on him. Um, they could be sneaking at another offensive lineman, but I like Newton. I like the value there. I like his pass, pass rush ability. Wasn't able to participate at the combine, so that was a little bit of a bummer, but um, freaky dude there um, going to the Packers. 26, the Buccaneers get Cooper DeGene. They traded Carlton Davis, so they'll need another corner. Uh, Cooper DeGene, a really good zone corner, going to a pretty good zone defense of Todd Bowles. Uh, you know, a lot of zone, a lot of cover three, cover four over there in Tampa. Perfect for Cooper DeGene, that Iowa defense you know, running a lot of like NFL zone defense there. Like most teams run man because it's simplified for the young kids that aren't the smartest yet. But Iowa, they run a ton of zone. Um, so I think a really solid fit here for Todd Bull's defense uh, at 26 overall. 27, this was a tough one because I think Chop Robinson should go a lot earlier in this. And I do think he could go a lot earlier in this. I mean, the Bears could take him. We had the, the Bears pick nine, but we had him in that 12 spot. They can take him there. Um, I don't think the Saints take him at 14 because they're more of a traits team. They won't like his length. I think I could see the Colts taking him at 15. I could see the Seahawks at 16. Um, man, I could see a number of teams. I think he should go. There's a good shot that Chop Robinson be my number two pass rusher behind Dallas Turner on my board. But uh, because of the lack of production, because of the lack of length, maybe he drops a little bit. But if you watched him, he was made way more of an impact in the, the stat show. Um, Elite and not elite prospect get off, elite NFL get off from him. So very explosive. Great for uh, Jonathan Gannon here. So this would be an A-plus pick for me uh, with Chop Robinson, 27 of the Cardinals. 28, the Bills get a corner, which they definitely could use. Um, struggles there last year, and they cut Tredavious White, and they lost Dane Jackson. Not that it's a ma- those are major, major losses, but you know they needed corners on top of that. So badly need some help there now. Uh, they grab Nate Wiggins, athletic playmaker from Clemson. Uh, 29, the Lions get their outside receiver that they badly need. They have not addressed that yet. Uh, Adonai Mitchell, who lit it up for Texas when the game was on the line, get him the ball. Love that about him. He lit up the combine as well. Uh, it's an outside receiver to compliment Amon St. Brown, who's uh, one of the best, the very best slot receivers in football. Um I would love this for the Lions. It just seems like they're their type of guy. They're just going to have to start valuing receiver a little bit more here and actually pull the trigger in the first round. But I would absolutely love this in this range. Um, I'd be a little careful with his. He's getting a lot of buzz right now, but I'd be a little careful with a team using a pick on him in the middle of the first. I think this is more of the range here, uh, but I would like this for the Lions. Good fit. Something they kind of, maybe they're saving uh, getting receiver for this moment here. Uh, pick 30, the Back-to-back Texas receiver Xavier Worthy getting a lot of buzz after the combine. Um, you know, Hurd does a shot. He can be the fourth receiver taking him. I have him the actually uh, the sixth receiver. I think that's realistic. The Ravens like their speed. They got a big playability guy here that can play outside and play in a slot. Could also go Lad McConkey. You know, has the ties to Todd Munkin. But, um, you know, Worthy likely a top six receiver, more likely than McConkey here. Um, so Ravens get that speed that they look for um, from their receivers. 31, uh, 49ers go to Graham Barton. I feel a little more comfortable in the second round, but here we are. 31st pick. We're two picks away um, you from the second round, so it kind of makes some sense. The offensive line help. Uh, I There's some other tackles like Fatanu, uh, Fuaga, that people say uh, maybe they're a guard, and I could see their upside at guard, but I love how they play at tackle. I love it, so I'm going to listen to the tackle. Barton, I watch I watch him play tackle, and he's decent, but I can definitely see, like, I like him a lot better at guard. He has a lot, he's going to be a lot better at guard than, he, than where he currently is at tackle. So then the Niners start him at guard, but hey, he has a lot of experience playing tackle. Niners have some, you know, left tackle. Trent Williams, if he goes down, if he misses some games, boom, there you go. Right tackle, Colt McKivitz is still, uh, you know, a little bit of a, a question, even though he's decent as upside um, so you could potentially move him from guard tackle if you absolutely need to. Um, so I thought that made some sense. Seems like a really good scheme fit uh, for Shanahan's offense as well. And the Chiefs did add Hollywood Brown. It's only a one-year deal. They could definitely use another one. You know, they cut uh, Valde Scantling, and on top of that, they needed multiple receivers as it is. So you get McConkie in there, pair him with Rasheed Rice and Hollywood Brown. Now we're talking for Chiefs receivers here. Um, 
you know, could be a good receiver for them for a, for a long time. So there you see the first round. Let's talk about the second round at the top. I had the Panthers taking Xavier Leggett, who's getting a lot of buzz after his combine. You know, really tough after the catch, really physical, uh, you know, and very athletic as well. So the Panthers, they do have Deontay Johnson. They do have Thielen, but how long is Thielen going to be around for? But now you kind of get that physical receiver that's really good after the catch, and they could even add an outside you know, boundary possession catch receiver, you know, maybe in free agency still or in the draft, um, you know, so it's all kind of coming together there for the Panthers. Uh, but they could use an edge rusher really, really bad. There is a massive drop off an edge rusher after the first round. I do have them with the next pick taking Braswell from Alabama. That might be a little early, but they badly need a pass rusher. So they get Leggett and, and then Braswell. Uh, Patriots get their receiver in Troy Franklin for Bo Nix. Uh, they kind of need that outside downfield receiver. Uh, they added Osborne, who's kind of a do-it-all guy. I think he'll play in the slot a bit. Uh, and they have Bourne, that's kind of a similar. Uh, Cardinals take Kool-Aid McKinstry, who I think has first-round talent. Injury prevented him, like a new injury prevented him from working out the combine. Cardinals badly need a corner. They get one there. Commanders get Tyler Guyton, that tackle of the future. Chargers need an interior defensive lineman. Chris Jenkins, you know, Michigan connection with Harbaugh. Uh, Titans get Roman Wilson. You know, they have Calvin Ridley, who is more of an outside receiver, but kind of a do-it-all guy. DeAndre Hopkins, outside receiver. I would like Wilson in the slot, even though he's played both uh, at the next level. So the Titans, you know, Callahan, they're going to value receivers. Talking about the Panthers pick there. Commanders get a corner, and it's Rake Straw. They actually signed Michael Davis this morning, but he can play in the slot if you need him to. Uh, Packers get their linebacker and Peyton Wilson who lit up the combine Texans now have the Vikings pick at 42 this could work out for them though they get Braden Fisk because they badly need a D tackle that seems like a good fit in D'Amico Ryan's defense uh, Lasseter which there's some concern about his 40 time from his pro day but the Falcons grab him really physical was really good at Georgia Raiders uh, get Jordan Morgan, need that tackle. They're going to potentially move him to right tackle. Uh, Darius Robinson seems like a Saints guy, like physical, long, defensive end, a lot of upside there. Colts get Tyler Newbin. They need a safety back there. Um, you know, they need to add a safety, obviously. They can still do that. Something, you know, could they get Julian Blackman back? It's a possibility. Um, Max Melton for the Giants. They definitely could use another corner. Zach Frazier, so a guy for the future. They, they signed Mitch Morse, which I like. He's not going to be around for much longer. But Frazier could also play guard if you need him to. Uh, Bengals lost DJ Reader, so needing that nose tackle. They added Rankins, not a nose tackle, though. Um, so they get sweat from Texas. Um, Eagles get a tackle of the future. Kingsley Suomataya, uh, kind of the future replacement for Lane Johnson. Javon Bullard for the Steelers. I like Bullard a lot. Uh, right now, he's looking like my number one safety in the class, but he's a guy that also I'd be very high on as a slot corner. I think he's going to do both. I think we're going to, like, he's really good at, like, split field safety, um, and he's really good in the slot if you need him to cover from the slot. So the Steelers running cover two, man coverage, use him in split field, or you can bring him down in man coverage in the slot. I think that makes a lot of sense. I like Bullard a lot, and that he impressed me at the combine, too. Um, Michael Penix Jr., a little bit of a bull one here, going to the Rams, so that quarterback potentially of the future they did bring in Garoppolo. But trying to figure out where to peg Penix, I wouldn't mind, you know, in this scenario, I had the Patriots picking at 23. I wouldn't mind Penix there at all. If the Vikings needed a quarterback and they were still on the clock with 23, I would love Penix for them there, get that fifth-year option. So we'll see. Um, Mike Sanders still is going to be a really good slot corner, kind of replacing Avante Maddox for the Eagles. Um Marshawn Nealon from from Western Michigan, who's you know physical, uh, very productive, uh, going to the Browns. They, they you know they it feel, feels like a good fit for their defensive end spot that they could use. Keon Coleman for the Dolphins. So I think they're kind of looking for you know what they wanted from Cedric Wilson, uh, guys like that, like a big body. Um, you know, receiver, so they get Coleman there. Cowboys, we know they're waiting for the draft to get their running back. I think Jonathan Brooks has the most talent. He's a Texas guy, but he's coming off that ACL injury. Uh, I don't think the Cowboys want to mess around with that, even though they would love to have the big play guy from Texas. They get Trey Benson, who's kind of a complete back, you know, at that size, running, you know, 4-3 speed. Um, that's going to be appealing. Uh, Jatavion Sanders, so a tight end for the Buccaneers. I think I had that last time as well. Jalen Polk, you know, the Packers got a number of good receivers, but they've had good luck in the second round very recently. Um, Jaden Reed last year, Christian Watson the year before. Watson's kind of a do-it-all, like speed guy, could be a gadget guy, do-it-all type guy. Um, Jaden Reed, you know, started kind of, a, you know, they like getting him screen passes, end-arounds, kind of a gadget guy, but he can do a bit as well. 
Um, you know, and they, have some, they have some other receivers that are sneaky that can play, but Polk is that downfield contested catch guy that they definitely could use. Um, but the Packers are a little careful with going with guys like that because usually those guys are like big and they're not like that. You know, they don't not the quickest guys. They don't get the separation. But Polk is not like that. He's a contested guy, catch guy that can really do a bit of everything and he can move. So I think the Packers would really like him. Ricky Pierce saw for the Texans here. They they they've been looking for another receiver, so they grab him. Uh, Bills need a safety. They get a free safety in Bullock, who does have some tackling issues. He's not afraid to get downhill and hit you, but he'll whiff. Uh, but he's a big time rangy playmaker in the back end. Uh, Andrew Phillips from Kentucky, who I like a lot. Uh, for the Lions, can play outside or the slot. Just seems like that physical guy, uh, kind of what the Lions look for. Uh, Blake Fisher for the Ravens. They badly need offensive line, especially, you know, they really need offensive line. Could go first round, have them taking that receiver they also badly need. Blake Fisher, I think they would like. I think they would move him to guard. I think he would start at guard for them, but he's been a good tackle. They seem to take Notre Dame guys, too, so that, that's actually kind of a bonus there. But you have that ability to play him at guard with the upside or play him at tackle. Uh, Niners could use a cor- corner. They get TJ Tampa. And a bold one here, the Chiefs go Jalen Wright, the Tennessee home run hitter. Um, he's super speedy, but he's got some bulk and you know, physicality to him. Um, they ha- they love Isaiah Pacheco, and they're more the type of, of drafting one later, which I guess you can't really say that. They drafted Clyde Edwards later in the first round. But they don't really have anybody after Pacheco right now. And the Chiefs understand the mileage and you know Pacheco with his physicality, how he runs. Like we're gonna look out for another guy. And Wright is a good guy to pair with him that home run speedy guy that can catch the ball pretty well. So I actually think the Chiefs would actually like him a lot. But would they spend a second round on him? That is the question. Um let's see what happened here. Uh something happened. Bills are extending to Ron Johnson, one of the better slot guys there. So that is good for their secondary. We had them pairing some secondary guys, some DBs with him. So we'll see. But there's my two-round mock draft with trades. Let me know your guys' thoughts. We're always updating these. Always uh, keeping you guys updated on our Twitter. Check out our sponsors, GLD Shop Liquid IV, code GOAT for a percentage off. Links pinned in the comments for anything you're looking for. We have a bunch of free agency grades, trade grades videos on the channel. Might be some more of those to come. Kind of going to recap free agency, and we're going to have a bunch of draft content on the way. I'm excited. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.